Hi, I'm Analytical, the sickeningly entertaining and educational coding drag queen. And today we're gonna code this brush. We're gonna code or we're gonna attempt to code it using P5JS, a creative coding library in JavaScript. We already drew an eyeshadow palette, so I thought we need to have a brush to go along with it. Duh. Let's go into processing. I've got some processing stuff set up. I just made this new template which includes obviously the setup and draw stuff, which comes in P5JS to make everything work. But I also found this like stuff for gradients and shadows. I don't know if I'm gonna use it today, but I wanna start all of my projects with it now, just so I have all that available. And I'll link this below so you can play around with it as well. We were just on stream playing around, um, actually drawing some gradients in this eyeshadow palette. You know, perhaps this will come up. I'll, I'll link this too so you can see all the improvements we're making to it as we go through. So I'm gonna draw an eyeshadow brush. I have an idea, you know, this is just like an elf brush, just a basic big brush. I've got tons of brushes and I figure we can draw one, we can draw a bunch of them and maybe generate them, generate a bunch of them, maybe make <laughs> make some generative makeup brush art. But you gotta start with one. I'm thinking I just wanna draw like a long stick with like a curved bottom and that'll be the handle of the brush. And then for the top of it, I'll draw like a bunch of lines and like have them be different lengths and maybe like a few different colors to create a gorgeous effect. Let's make a few variables to figure out where our brush is gonna start and end and the length and the width and the height, just so we'll be able to use those in our other vari in our other calculations of figuring out where, how long the bristles should be. That's just the best place I like to start with any of these creative coding projects of like, define the variables we're gonna need because it makes it a lot easier down the line. Brush width, brush height. And actually you don't always need to type out let for each of these. You can do a comma and space a bunch of them here. So I can also write brush X, brush Y. This can be nice if you just have a bunch of variables you want to declare at once. And let's have like a bristle length and a bristle angle because some brushes are more spread out, some are more like narrow and tapered. The first thing we want to do, draw our brush at our brush X, our brush Y, and the width and the height. As I said, say this, I realize I'm probably going to want to set all these variables, so I am going to need to define them at. I'll start the brush in the middle of the screen width-wise and the why I'll maybe just put it down like 20 pixels or something. No, let's need more because we're gonna need to have more room for the brush at the top. Let's just start it at the height divided by two, not make things too complicated. The start, the start of our gorgeous brush. We probably wanna make this a little bit, uh, a little bit wider, especially this one. This brush is pretty wide and I think it's like long and you might see I've got like a silver part here. Not gonna worry about that right now, but could be an option to configure later down the line. And let's also do rect mode center because you can see I put it in the center, but it's off by a little bit because the X is starting at the middle and then going outward. Now it is centered. So maybe the height, I actually want to go down a little bit more as well. So I'm just adding the brush height so I can have it, the top of it start directly in the center of the screen. And it's definitely gonna to need to be longer. How much longer? 150 seems good. I pulled up the rectangle reference because I wanted to see I want to curve the bottom. This has like this really nice curve. I'm like throwing my dirty brushes all over this desk. That is, it's inappropriate. We can curve just one of the corners or as many corners as we would like by passing them in. So the first is top left, top right. So I want those to be zero, 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 zero. And then the bottom right and the bottom left. So those will be, let's also add another variable for that for the curve. Let brush curve equal five. I don't really know what this variable is going to look like. Brush C, brush C. That is certainly not enough curve for me. 50, now we're talking. Now, now we're talking. <laughs> I almost like, does it get longer? I feel like it gets wider, but that's just this brush. No, we're not overcomplicating it. We're just drawing it. We've got our brush handle. This actually looks pretty good. I'm not upset with it. I am certainly not upset with it. Now I want to draw all of the bristles. And actually, I think I want to draw the bristles first because then I can cover them with the brush and they'll like end nicely. I'm going to make a variable for the number of bristles. I feel like this will help me kind of control how many I need and I should put an equal sign in there so so my code is uh, correct. That's usually a good way to a good way to code. Let i equal zero. i is less than the number of bristles. i plus plus. We're going to draw a line. Where is this line going to be? Let's just draw one line going up and rotating that from the initial position and maybe at different lengths. 
and then we can vary it along the um, along the top of here so it fills up the entire bristle. I don't know how to draw lines in P5 because I feel like I've never done it. What better way to do it than look up how to do it? And it's just the X, Y, X1, Y1, X2, Y2. I can work with that. So my X1 and Y1, let's, this will be the brush X and the brush Y. And then I wanna go up. I feel like I need to use cosine and sine gasp, but I'm gonna do it. So let's set this brush length to like 50 as well. And then I'm gonna get a random angle to like tilt this up and down. Let rando angle. Not random angle, rando, ooh. <laughs> this will be a random number between zero and bristle angle, which I'll set to, how wide? How wide is that? Like 45, 45 degrees. I wanna be in angle mode degrees because radians confuse me and degrees, it's just a little bit easier for someone like me. Someone with a math degree, someone with a degree in computer science and statistics, to work with degrees because it makes me happier. It doesn't matter my experience level or yours. Work with what makes you happy. I think I do brush X plus sign of, maybe it'll be times the sign of the bristle angle of my rando angle. Brush Y times the cosine of the rando angle. I, think, I, 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 I just, I'm, I just, I just, this isn't where I wanted them to start. <laughs> As I look at this now, I guess I really want them to start at the width divided by two and the height divided by two. It's because I'm adding that brush H divided by two, so that's causing the issue. This isn't necessarily better, but at least they're in the right place. The issue here is the angles are wrong. Let's just do, let's just make the angle zero. The angle zero times that. So I want to go like, Mm, it's not the brush X. I think it's the brush length. I think it would be brush X plus brush bristle length times that angle and then brush Y times that angle. Brush Y plus the bristle length times that angle. Let's put these at the angle of I instead of random numbers. So it's like, I've got this variable that's increasing. Let's try it out. So they're all just too low. What if I swap cosine and sine? Is that going to do anything? No. Looks exactly the same. That's good to know. Good to know, you know. Perhaps if I subtract, oh hey, we've got one bristle. Finally, finally, give us the bristles. Now we would just wanna go between like zero and 180. I'm gonna use the map function for this because this is like the one of the best parts about processing the map function. I will map a random number that normally goes between zero and one instead to zero and 180. And this is gonna give me like that full width. So we'll have to figure out how to like scrunch that down. It's probably gonna be in that zero to 180. We'll narrow that in. Um, do we have a fan brush? Do we have a fan brush? Yes, we have a fan brush. Yes, we have a fan brush. So now I'd wanna limit this. So what, what angle is this? Come on, come on, it's like Dora the Explorer. I'm getting like, <laughs> I'm gonna hold this up to my, to my sign values. You can't see it on the screen, but I'm seeing, um, I think 45 is my limit. That's that's what I had before, isn't it? So it goes between 45 and 135. Bristle A, that's my bristle angle, then 180 minus the bristle A. Now it will give us more like tight and filled in. Fabulous. I'm adding another variable for the bristle variation. So here this will be five. So that way, because here we've got a bunch that go like up and down, they're all different heights. Our current length is gonna be bristle length plus and we're gonna get another random number. And we will go from negative bristle V to positive bristle V. Then we will use it instead of bristle L, and this kind of makes things shorter, which is nice. Now we're getting some texture, we're giving some variation. One more thing before we add color is we wanna fill out that whole brush. Actually, what if we just like move this up 10 pixels? I don't know if I hate that. I kind of think that's like, I kind of think that's a lot better than having to like draw them all out and have them maintain the angles. I'm gonna keep that. I'm keeping that. Okay, work. We've got a brush, a br 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 brush. I wanna make the variation a little bit higher. So let's make this 10. Let's make the bristle length 70. And I wanna have a lot more bristles. Oh, we need bristles, 500. Ooh, that is looking dense, dense. I could like fiddle with all these variables for days. 
Mm. But see, as I made it wider, I need to like increase this a little bit too. This is this is math that I'm not going to figure out on here, but it's definitely something good to play with yourself. Come and join me on a live stream. We will configure all those variables to make things look gorgeous. So I could make this just brown. I could do a stroke brown, not that. That's those are not the colors I want. But I will f first I will push this just so I can maintain that black color for the for the brush. Let's go back to the color picker and, and I want to get a brown. This is very one dimensional and I'm not interested in, in being a one dimensional person. Queen, drag artist, coder. We got to add a few other colors. Let's just add some like variation in this color as we go through it. So we'll move this stroke into our for loop. Let's just do plus random 0 to 20. I'll do that for both of these colors. Wait, that's actually fabulous. Let's do 30. I think we can handle a little bit more variation. You can't tell me that's not a makeup brush. You cannot tell me that is not a makeup brush. Uh, we did it. We coded a makeup brush. Iconic. Uh, amazing. If you think that looks like a makeup brush, leave a like on this video, subscribe, ring the bell. What a fun coding challenge. There's obviously so much where we can do to make these look more realistic. We can add some of those gradients and shadows I had at the bottom of there. We can add more colors. We can add more textures and variation. But the code is in the description for you to go and do all that on your own, play around with it. We'll do some of that on a live stream probably, and maybe in a future video, who knows, we will see. But I love giving you some fun templates that you can try out, challenge yourself, and even just pick up this code, change a few variables until you get, pick, up, pick out one of your brushes. That's my challenge for you. Pick out one of your brushes, see if you can create it in here and change the colors and make it look fabulous. Thank you so much for watching and have a fabulous time coding.